Welcome to everybody. Welcome. Lado, vidim te. Ciao, Lado. Dobro jutro iz Srbije. Dobro jutro. Dobro jutro. Konnichiwa. Hi, Zoltan. Konnichiwa. Hello, David Johnson. Hi, David. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. So how many lots? Do you have some snow in 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 Japan or not yet? Hi, carpet. Lots of, lots of. Hi, Hayao Sensei. Konnichiwa. Hayao Sensei. Hello. Hi, Shigeoka. Shigeoka. Hi, Shigeoka. Onishiyama Sensei. Hello. Horiba san. Very, very welcome. Oh, step up. Horiba. Hi. Hello, Professor Tanasawa. Oh, hello to all team in Yonosato. Yeah. Hi, Shion san. Hello. Konnichiwa. Tanaka-san, hello. Tanaka, you know, san. Some people are connecting still to the audio. Yes. Harpet, hello, Harpet. Hi, Tanaka-san. Okay. So we're in Japan and five o'clock past. Welcome to everybody. Hi, Lian. Um, it is, I have to tell you, that was a great idea of Yelena to um, propose to have um, a, a party. Um, Bonenkai. Bonenkai is a Japanese way of celebrating um, uh, uh, the passing year and welcoming the new one. Um, well, the work party means that we, we We'll be enjoying our, ourselves and um, celebrating. And I think we, we have lots of things to celebrate this year. And um, of course, at the end of something, at the end of, of the year, usually what, what we do is um, see what we have done and uh, think about what we would like to do in the coming year. So I would like to propose today to uh, be, um, open enough to have a discussion. Ah, discussion is a very hard one, but just to share what each of us would like to do in the coming year. So I would be very, very happy if we can um, have a talk and conversation after we listen to Yelena's um, a presentation for achievements, discoveries of this year. Uh, I'll be very, very happy if we can share um, thoughts afterwards. Yelena, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Mm, now, um, I'll try to share the screen. Uh, dun, 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 share, but then, okay. Lawrence, can you help me? Do we see it? Okay. Yes, we see, but you better uh, okay. give a okay. full screen. Okay, great. Thank you. Well, Thank you everyone for joining this Bonenkai party. I'm very, very happy that um, you're all here. And I understand that in Europe, the holidays have already uh, begun. So I very much appreciate uh, all European guests coming here, especially from my, of course, country, Serbia. It's so nice to see you here. Um, so uh, today, this is not going to be a very, how can I say, um, from scientific view, it's not going to be very informative. But uh, I hope that I can present to you, um, um, let's say, the pieces of the puzzle that we managed to put into a larger um, picture during this year. So let's start actually from the beginning. So at the, uh, one of the things that uh, really shaped um, the beginning of uh, year 2022 for us was our first book. So the book was published actually in the in November, November, December, 2021. And we were very, very, let's say anxious uh, about how it is going to be, you know, accepted by the, by the audience. And we are very happy uh, that I can today uh, give you a report that we got from our uh, editor, senior editor in Springer, Dr. Shinichi Koizumi who yesterday wrote to me with uh, official um, uh, official numbers, actually, for the performance of our book. And uh, so uh, 
up to today, the the chapters are either viewed or downloaded more than uh, more than four thousand uh, times, and uh, this is actually the major uh, way of um, uh, of uh, purchasing <laughs> the book nowadays. So people buy by, cha by chapter; they don't buy the full book um, usually. However, we we did uh, also sell whole books in hard copies and in electronic versions. And um, basically, the performance of our books is of our book, first book in Optomics, is that we were in the top 10% of all titles in chemistry and material science. And uh, especially according to Dr. Kuizumi, this is really a great achievement because this is a monograph, which means it is really, you know, hardcore scientific work and not a, a textbook or a handbook, which is, for example, um, um, let's say easier to sell because students needed. So um, I think we were very, very successful with this and we were happy that we could share this uh, performance with you today. Um, regarding our other book, we are still making um, plans on how can we start to work on it, but um, this is the first thing that we published in Photomics. This is based on 20 years of past experience, mainly Professor Tsenkova's. And we are slowly, uh, let's say, gathering experience uh, to uh, put a really, really good book, uh, which will take uh, not only our experience into account, but experiences and works of all uh, the people who currently who are working in epidemics. So it takes a little bit of planning and uh, a lot, of, a lot of systematization. So please just be with 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 us. I think we will make it in two thousand and twenty three. Now, the next thing that we did, so uh, in this year, we actually, uh, uh, I think our performance regarding the papers that we published was simply astonishing. <laughs> Usually when I was um, when I was a student, when I just became um, actually a postdoc, uh, I was very anxious. I was very worried because one of the uh, major, let's say, um, uh, points uh, of how you're going to be assessed as a, as a scientist is how many uh, publications you made per year. And I know that I remember that once I'm, uh, I asked some very, very su uh, successful professor, uh, so how many papers you expect for me to publish per year? And he said, well, one paper per year is definitely not enough. I would not keep you, for example, as, a, as an employee. Three can be okay. So I'm very, very happy that uh, in this year, we actually not only managed to publish almost 14 papers, we also managed to publish a first special issue. Special issue is um is um, um let's say um a, um, a particular um issue of a specific journal which is dedicated to some uh, to some topic of interest. So for me and Professor Tenkova, this topic is aquaphotonics, and our first special issue uh, was published this year in um, collaboration with the journal Molecule, uh, published by MDPA. And in this um, special issue, we collected 21 papers in the area of aquaphotomics, and all these papers, 18 original research papers and three review papers, are actually cutting-edge science. So um, these are the most, um, uh, let's say, modern works in, in the aquaphotomics field. And what, uh, what I would like to uh, say I'm particularly proud that we achieved with this first special issue is that um, we collected works in uh, which use spectroscopy from basically the entire range of electromagnetic spectra. We usually, we usually say, we insist on, on this, that apophotomics and actually this water-light interaction should be in the entire um, electromagnetic spectra, but mainly our work here in uh, Epitomics Research Department is done by near infrared. Uh, however, with this special issue, we managed to collect works from other researchers, and some uh, some of the works also included um, our help. And we uh, gathered uh, studies done by near infrared spectroscopy, Raman spectroscopy, which is uh, complementary actually to near infrared infrared and even polarized spectroscopy. Uh, 21 research paper is something that, uh, so for example, um, as I uh, searched for other special issue published, um, is a really excellent achievement. For example, in comparison, um, special issue with near infrared spectroscopy, which is established as a science a scientific area, 
and uh, has a history of more than 40 years, uh, gathers 30 works. And we, which is, I mean, Aphotomics is a modern science, which is maybe like not even 20 years old, uh, we gathered uh, two thirds of that. So I'm very proud of this achievement. And I would like to say my first thank you, and I'm going to actually say many, many thank yous um, this evening. Uh, my very big um, thank you goes to Tsukino Shizuku Foundation, who without their help, uh, this special issue would, would not be so successful. I don't, I don't think we would have basically half of the papers. So, um, Thank you to Tsukino Shizuku Foundation, who uh, actually funded publication of several papers in this issue, and especially to the uh, chairperson of Tsukino Shizuku uh, Foundation, um, our really incredible uh, Tomoko-san, Miura-san, who, um, who did a really <laughs> amazing work behind to gather the funds and organize even the fundraising event. And I would like to thank not only, you know, like this foundation as an institution, but all these people who are behind this institution and who are donating um, uh, their efforts, their time, uh, their funds to the development of aquatomics. So my, my really heartfelt thank you uh, to you all. Tomoko, thank you. <laughs> um, next, regarding this special issue, uh, we have... Um, uh, a little bit, uh, let's say, um, as some kind of progression. So since we were very successful, uh, we got an offer to publish this special issue also as a book. So uh, at this moment, we started uh, arranging uh, all these papers into a book uh, with a preface, with an editorial, and uh, the book is going to be uh, actually having in, in, um, in total more than 350 pages. And um, uh, regarding the, 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 uh, the papers and the topics that are going to be in this book, uh, we're covering with these papers actually all the topics starting from the basic science, about water, about water structure, about fundamentals, about hydration mechanisms, about water and material interactions. Uh, also, there are many papers which are uh, very useful for people who are um, in a, who are interested in um, improvement of their um, uh, skills in analysis and pre-processing of spectra. So the first part of the book is specialized for that, and I would really um, uh, recommend uh, to anyone who, who is working in aquaphotomics to read, especially um, the paper "Pre-processing NIR Spectra for for Aquaphotomics," which is. Uh, which was invited by us and which these uh, top leaders in, in um, uh, chemometrics and spectral preprocessing wrote um, to address some needs that we that we uh, have in aquatomics. And the majority of the papers that we received and organized in this special issue uh, came from uh, the area of food quality and agriculture. And I think this is uh, so far uh, the, the area of aquatomics that is most developed. And in this um, uh, what I also uh, saw as a as a really good trend, I think that aquaphotomics is uh, starting to be very well established in the area of uh, detecting food adulter adulteration. So whoever is working with food adulter uh, adulteration, I think this is going to be very interesting um, part of the book uh, for you to read. And finally, uh, one area of the of the one. Um, uh, part of the book is going to be dedicated to very, very complex <laughs> applications and the new findings that we have about the cell, cells biology, uh, and about new ways of uh, diagnosing diseases in animals and even monitoring uh, therapy in humans. Um, so I don't think I would, uh, yes, ah, there's one very important information about the book. The electronic version of the book, so PDF, will be free for download and only the hard copies of the book are going to be sold for people. So you can have the entire issue organized as a book and download for free uh, from the publisher's uh, website. And we will of course send uh, to all our um, list of um, our contact list, the, the link which, from which the book can be downloaded. There was another issue actually, special issue that we worked, but this is the second special issue. <laughs> and we were sort of like a guest 
uh, editors. So um, in there was one more issue that we worked this year on, and um, we participated in actually a, a special issue of German of Raman spectroscopy. With Professor Tsenko, I was a um, guest editor with together with um, some very very um, very well established. Uh, scientist in the area of water science, uh, Professor Yamaguchi and Professor Hamaguchi. And in this volume um, uh, of um, Journal of Raman Spectroscopy, uh, we actually have two papers uh, uh, which are in area of acrotomics, and I would really um, like to recommend both these papers. Uh, one is coming from one of my favorite acrotomic scientists, Professor Takeuchi, and uh, the other one is coming from our Chinese aquaphotomics team of Professor Shao. Uh, both are very, very, uh, for me at least, highly recommended papers for reading. And regarding this issue, this special issue, I think I have to apologize. I was also invited to provide a review from our side, but uh, unfortunately, I was not able. So my apologies, and I promise that I will have a review on aquaphotomics in, in the next year. So this is in the spirit of Bon and Kai Party. I want to apologize for, for something that I failed to do, and I actually uh, promise that I will be better next year. And now we can forget about it. <laughs> Um, okay, now regarding the papers, as I said, uh, this year we were like absolutely incredible. I can't even um, believe how we managed to do this. So I will going, I'm going to um, go through each of these papers in brief to tell you what we discovered, what was the major point actually from the paper and main message that we would like for, um, for let's say, a reader to stay with after the reading of the, of the paper. So in part... We definitely have 13 published articles, which is like more than one article per year. And we started in January with one paper, which I absolutely adore. I absolutely adore this paper. And I think this paper is going to be one of my favorite pa uh, favorite papers of my life. I think I wrote it incredibly. <laughs> I mean, I love all my papers and all my papers are something like my children. Some of them, let's say, are my own. Some of them I sort of adopted. And regarding this paper, I think I can say that I sort of kidnapped this paper from, from our collaborators in Italy. But I'm so grateful to this Italian group who um, actually asked for our help in, in um, uh, analyzing and interpreting the, the, the results of, of their experiments uh, within the fra framework of, of aquaphotomics. So they did one very, very simple study. They monitored the state of rice germ using near infrared spectroscopy. And then we got their um, results and we started to try to understand what is going on with the water. And what we got from this paper and from these results is we understood what water activity is. And one of the major things that at least now I have clarified and I would like to whole world to know this, <laughs> that the water activity is not related to free water molecules. Water activity is def defined by water vapor. Water vapor are, are, are the fastest moving water species. And this is what actually water activity is, not free, free water molecules. So this is the first message. The second message with this paper uh, is uh, that we, we got, we get, uh, let's say, uh, to be acquainted with um, intermediate water. This intermediate water is something between the ice phase and between vapor phase, and it is not also free, free or bulk water. It is intermediate, it is something like a liquid crystalline, and it seems as uh, it is, let's say, if we want to be precise in the atomic terms, it absorbs around 1436 nanometer, and it is absolutely crucial for living processes and for sus sustaining life. So if you want something to be preserved, if you want to make something living, you have to have this kind of water. And in this paper, uh, for the first time, we decided to present a new concept when we're presenting our works. So instead of just giving assignments for our water species, for uh, the bands at which they absorb, we also decided to, to start um, presenting that each of these water species serves a, per, um, a certain role. So, for example, now we know that the water vapor bands are at uh, 1365, 1375, 1370, uh, 1385 nanometers. And um, this water vapor, uh, this water vapor um, 
species are actually fast moving. Um, they're in contact fast um, uh, in fast exchange with the environment. They're critical for um, uh, let's say exchange of information in, in bacteria species. Then um, if you have, for example. Um, some fruit or food and you have that kind of water inside that means it's not going to be juicy when you're when you're eating it so now we're starting to describe our systems also in the terms of functionality so this paper i think i believe maybe maybe um well maybe it is uh, its importance is not recognized yet because it's recently published but i'm certain that by by the end of my life this paper is going to be well received Ben, um, Irena, can I, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Can I just yeah. uh, I want course. to say a few words about this? Mm -hmm. um, you started with uh, water activities not being free water molecules, but uh, water vapor, and still, the water activity is presented as a spectral pattern, pattern which is based right. not only, even not only on on uh, water vapor bands, but including also um, other bands. So, um, instead of having water activity as a one parameter. Uh, which is used at the moment, and this really this rela related to the the water that conden uh, that make it condensed condensed water after um, using pressure. This is how how they measure water activity at the moment. But what is I think what is beautiful about this paper is that we we showed in in, in other papers also we continue uh, showing that we can give a multi dimensional um, characteristics of um specific function and this is the the first such uh, um, example which is uh, uh, really rich of information yes thank you okay. well, whoever wants if they want if you want to maybe have a if you have a question um just raise your hands and lawrence will tell me uh you can interrupt me and um i can for example you know answer your yeah question. I, I think it, it would be very nice if we can mm. discuss uh, uh, mm. uh, all this yes. thing okay uh the next paper, which is uh, which is published um, very uh, close to this paper, is about detection of cold stress in soybean. So this is actually a very old topic on which uh, other people worked before me. But when I joined, uh, we, we were finally uh, able to start wrapping up these results. So this paper uh, about cold stress in soybean was wrapped up for our special issue in, in January. And this is one of the first papers that we published. Uh, and what we showed in this paper is first that early, early <laughs> cold, um, that the early detection of cold stress can be uh, performed with aquaphotomics, even when, for example, these uh, plants are not stressed um, very much. So there is no damage if the temperature is decreased outside, for example, by only five degrees, we already can uh, detect that uh, these plants are starting to um, experience some def defense response. So this is something we managed to detect uh, in soybean. And in this paper, we, we used short near-infrared region, which for most of the people who are working in aquaphotomics is still um, not well known. So I would recommend this paper to whoever is interested in um, getting to know better uh, the absorbent spans of water and water structure in near-infrared um, region. And one thing that we um, uh, that we understood from this work and on which we are going to build in the next year further is that uh, while usually people think of genetic modification as something to lead to alterations in proteins, with this paper we show that genetic mod modification as a final result has actually manipulation of water structure in the leaves of, cold, of, of um, soybean. So what genetic modification did in this case is it allowed to these uh, plants who can um, fight cold stress very successfully, it allowed them to control the, the way the, uh, the water is organized in leaves so that the water structure in the leaves was as if the temperature outside is actually higher than it really is. So this is what genetic modification did in the case of, of, of soybean. And we will have uh, probably in the next year two more papers coming on this topic. One is in the first overturn, 
And the second one is really still in the short near Ifmareg uh, region, but uh, focused entirely on, on proving this of this point, the genetic modification equals rearrangement of water molecular structure. Uh, and yes, I forgot to say that I would like to thank, to give uh, also uh, some words of thanks to, to the people who worked on, on this, and especially to uh, one guy from Sri Lanka uh, called um, Junendra. I know him as a Junendra son. So Junendra actually is the first person who with Professor Trenko started working on, on plant stress. And um, uh, he wrote the first paper on, on plant stress, but on diagnosing uh, mosaic virus in soybean. So this is something that uh, then I joined and, and helped um, progress further. So thank you, Ginetta, and thank you, Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka has actually uh, quite nice scientists who are working in the area of plant stress. We had one scientist coming um, this year with us, and uh, we're going to go further with them uh, in this area. Then, um, Next papers are coming from our collaboration with uh, research gr research groups from Malaysia. So um, this is something that uh, we started this year, and so far I'm very very satisfied with my experience. I really uh, have high appreciation for for um, especially one girl who is working with me. Uh, her name is Mona. Uh, Mona is writing and doing taxonomics uh, like crazy. So with her we have three or four papers already within one year. So the first paper that we actually started with, with Malaysian group, uh, who are all actually physicists and engineers, is um, um, about the uh, um, detection of honey, uh, of adul adulteration in honey. So the paper that we did with them uh, was also published in our special issue of molecules. And what is the novelty? Because we had we had uh, previously um, uh, some papers published in the um, for detection or about detection of adulteration of honey, but uh, those previous studies were mainly done in the first overton of water. This uh, paper was about uh, um, detecting honey ad adulteration using short wavelength near infrared, and um, actually uh, three types of adulteration were uh, detected here by water, by um, acid uh, vinegar, and by um, sh uh, sugar syrup. Uh, so the novelty here in this paper is that we also provided um, for those people who are who do not understand very well short near, near infrared region, we are uh, we put assignments of the bands and we provided explanation of some of the water structures that we discovered are uh, related and that, that can be now used for detection of adulteration in honey. And one, um, one other, uh, let's say, um, thing that emerged as important uh, during this research is that we understood, again, uh, this importance of intermediate water. <laughs> this time we saw it in honey. And um, uh, we can say now what I, I saw, uh, that um, honey is healthy sugar because it doesn't have uh, one type of water species which are involved with actually misfolding of proteins. So this water is not present in honey. If the honey is adulterated, then this water appears. So uh, that is why I think uh, adulteration of honey is a serious, um, uh, um, serious, uh, how can I say, um, uh, alteration and a serious health, um, health hazard. Yes. So uh, I don't think that maybe anyone who reads this paper will understand uh, and see in, in what is written, what I just said, but I think uh, based on, our future publication, you will see that this um, this is actually the the, the story that uh, started with this paper. Oh, you're welcome, Mona. I'm very very happy to have you as my as my uh, collaborator. Then another uh, paper that we also did with another Malaysian group is um, uh, a review paper on uh, plant stress detection. So this this actually proved uh, to be a very very popular paper with already lots of citations. And uh, the, the important part of this paper is that it shows how many works um, in uh, was uh, uh, how many works in plant stress detection was uh, actually performed were performed using acrotomics. So I think this is the first review paper 
the trigger shows that aquaphotomics uh, is uh, established um, as a scientific method for diagnosing not only uh, abiotic stress, like for example, water stress or cold stress, but also biotic stress, like diseases that happen due to viral infection and so on. Um, and uh, one of the major, uh, uh, let's say, breakthroughs that we wanted to show with this, uh, this paper is that water is also a biomolecule in, in, the, in, the, um, uh, in the plant tissues. And uh, this biomolecule also undergoes changes in response at, and, is a, and as a part of the defense mechanism that, that uh, plant actually activate when something happens. So um, my heartfelt recommendations for this review paper for all the, of those who, wants, who want to know more about plant stress. Um, next, next paper. Um, okay, next paper. Ah, next papers are also with Malaysians. And again, with this wonderful girl, Mona. Uh, and the, this was, uh, for me, uh, those were like, um, how can I say, sweet desserts for me. I finally had the, the chance uh, in these papers um, uh, to work on cancer cells. And with these papers, we showed that uh, the chemical that is routinely used in, in laboratories, uh, namely phenol red, actually alters the medium and, and affects the cells. So sometimes uh, some, some things, so, some chemicals and also some parts of routine laboratory practices like filtering uh, are affecting our samples. And with these two papers, we showed that uh, phenol red, uh, for example, uh, does not help discriminating between the between the cancerous and healthy cells, and the better detection of what is healthy and what is cancerous uh, can be achieved if near infrared spectroscopy is used without any uh, you know modifications of the cell uh, without any use of phenol red. But on the contrary, if we want to uh, uh, to quantify how many cancer cells or how many normal cells we have. We found that uh, staining the cultures with phenol red helps quantification of cancer cells. So this is something like an enigma uh, of why does this happen? But we know that uh, actually it is uh, going that the part of the mechanism is uh, alteration of water molecular structure in the media and in the cells due to the presence of this phenol red. Uh, then uh, the two. Other papers, the next two papers that I would like to present are, so we are coming now back to Japan. And uh, I would like, before I actually say anything about the papers, uh, to say thank you to uh, Unosato Photomics Lab, which is a first ever, let's say, private and um, uh, uh, photomics laboratory organized in industrial uh, setting. And uh, uh, Unosato uh, is actually, um, are very, very, uh, over the years, uh, are very faithful uh, and supportive collaborator and supporter and developer of aquatomics. So in this year, we had two nice um, works with them. One is a pioneering study about, um, uh, about the influence of sound on water molecular structure. So this is something uh, which we showed for the first time with near infrared spectroscopy and aquatomics that sound does change molecular structure and depending on the frequency used, which is normally, for example, whatever music we are listening nowadays, it is tuned to 440 uh, hertz. So this music, if it is tuned to uh, 432 hertz, will have different impact on water molecular structure. And that means it will definitely influence differently our, our bodies. And this study, also showed that not only uh, water structure in changes in general uh, as, a, as exposed to the sound, but also uh, different types of water. For example, you can even think of the terms of different people, you know, different uh, bodies, body water is going to be influenced differently by, by sound. So that can explain why someone likes, for example, jazz music and someone doesn't and so on, or someone prefers God forbid, metal music. 
so this is very, very interesting and practical, and I think it can um, um, actually exert a level on um, on the on. Uh, I think it can um, exert influence on the world level because uh, imagine if uh, all the music now becomes tuned to 432 hertz, maybe the entire world population can become more calm. That would be very nice, I think. Uh, the other study is some kind of, let's say, even technical study that we did with the UNOSATO. Uh, it was about monitoring groundwater. So it is a standard, I think, also uh, practice now for aquatomics. We just once more confirmed that aquatomics can be used for monitoring water quality. And uh, But this time we made um, uh, water spectral patterns more robust and eliminated the undesired effects of temperature and humidity. And we did that also, we did that in short near, near infrared region. And again, in this paper, we provided a really, really extensive uh, list of uh, assignments of water absorbance bands in near infrared. So I hope that uh, you can see now, whoever is working with short near infrared, you can see that this was also uh, one of the main uh, research uh, topics for us uh, in this year. Uh, and of course, here, uh, I think I would like to thank not only, not only um, UNOSATO Lab, but also to our friends in Hungary, uh, especially Zoltan San, who is, a, you know, like, a, I don't know, our very, very long time friend and um, <laughs> uh, combatant, <laughs> you know, like, uh, we're, we're now like war friends. We have really a uh, long experience together. So thank you, Zoltan. And I will mention you again a little bit, bit later and I will ask you to say a few words if you can. I, I hope you won't mind. Uh, the next two papers that I would like to present are coming from our collaboration with Chinese group of Professor Zhang. And especially, I'm very, very happy that uh, I was um, I had this privilege to work a little bit with uh, um, one scientist from that lab, uh, which I appreciate very much, his name is Lian Li. And Lian, actually, if you, if you may not remember, he won the best poster uh, award at uh, our last international um, aquatomics conference. So this paper, uh, thank you, Lian, and uh, thank you, China, <laughs> for developing so much in the area of aquatomics. Um, this paper is important because uh, at least this uh, paper represents my first involvement with in infrared spectroscopy, my official involvement with in infrared spectroscopy and uh, performance of uh, aquatomics work in infrared region. And this is also first application of aquatomics for um, quality control of, um, of uh, traditional Chinese medicine. And I hope it will be just one of the man many. And uh, with this work, I'm, I'm very happy that uh, we were able to, to identify three water matrix coordinates in this region. And one of them coincides and very, very nicely is um, reflected in near infrared region too. Uh, I hope we will have more and more co cooperation in, in future because I have, um, I, had had, I have had fun working with infrared. And of course, it is useful. <laughs> Traditional Chinese medicine is very useful and I'm quite interested in, in the effects. Uh, so this is this is uh, let's say one of the unusual um, uh, well let's say samples that I had a chance to work with this year, and the second uh, type of unusual samples that I had a, a really uh, wonderful opportunity to work uh, this year is cement, and I would like to thank of course uh, to Isel Technica who actually came. Um, with, uh, with the idea of this project to use aquatomics for um, assessing actually the quality of cement and how and if even different types of water used in mixing of cement affect their properties. So this was absolutely the pioneering study done not only using aquatomics, but um, in you know assessing actually whether different types of water are affecting the quality of produced cement or not. So with this paper, we showed that absolutely, even though, you know, like chem um, usual chemical analysis are going to say, no, there, there, there is no significant difference between these waters. Using aquatomics, we showed that uh, 
definitely it matters. Maybe, you know, um, some, um, let's say, ions can be uh, varied between the waters in minute amounts. It's, uh, this, this difference still produce a really significant, huge um, uh, difference in water molecular structure and uh, affects, of course, in the result, what would be mechanical properties. So with this work, we found out that mineral waters, actually with mineral waters, which are produced by Urosato Spa, um, gave uh, much better shrinkage properties of cement. And we managed to actually predict what properties would be uh, during the first 24 hours of cement hydration. This is something which I don't think, uh, you know, like in people who produce cement or even research cement, I don't think anyone um, would uh, like think that this is possible, but it is um, basically from the start of hydration, we could say which, which water affects uh, the cement the best. So thank you to ISO Technica who brought this brilliant idea to us. And um, this is also one, just first paper, probably in a series of paper that we're going to do with, with, with them. And we have, um, for example, to examine how, it, uh, how uh, these different waters is, um, affect um, uh, strength uh, and other properties. So next, there was one per paper that I usually fail to mention and that we did this year. Uh, and this is a review paper Japan, uh, about photonics, and it is written entirely in Japanese. We've, we published this paper in Journal of Automatic Engineering. Uh, this was a um, paper done on invitation and presents all photonics from theory to simple applications. If you're interested in having this paper, feel free to just send me a message and we will send you. I have like 10 copies that I can, I can um, deliver. Uh, just give me an address and I will send. And uh, I would like to say that this is the first um, Yelena, actual Yelena, publication. Yelena, mm -hmm. Yelena. Yep. Um, yep. We have many copies of this paper. So whoever is interested to let us know. Okay. 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 Um, yes, I just wanted to say about this paper that uh, it was, um, it was very cute for me that uh, actually it is a, a product of all uh, female team. <laughs> so we have really five fantastic ladies who worked on this paper. And I think really we have uh, lots of very good um, women scientists who are working in atomics in Japan. Uh, um, one paper which is going to be, which is already published, but um, officially the date of publication is um, in February next year which is very, very interesting. It is um, about cows. So we, of course, <laughs> did something with cows. Uh, I don't think we ever failed to, to, to um, do an, uh, to something with milk or yogurt. So this time, uh, we also worked with cows with uh, diagnosing uh, abnormality. And um, the, uh, what is very novel about this paper and about the strategy that we used, uh, we actually used something which is uh, usually a problem in all other studies when people use near-infrared spectroscopy. Uh, they uh, complain about, uh, uh, about the thing that each animal is different. You cannot put them all together and create a global model. So that makes, um, that is why it is difficult to actually apply in practice um, near-infrared for diagnosis of disease. However, in this paper, what um, uh, the approach that was used, which was devised by Professor Tsenko, is to actually use this individuality to, um, let's say, monitor and establish the, the spectral pattern for each animal. And then, if the spectral pattern shows sudden changes uh, that, the, the, that the animal cannot be recognized, as the, this animal, then this is a sign that something is happening in, in its organism. And with this approach, we really had a very, very nice accuracy of um, detecting uh, abnormalities such as, for example, uh, ovulation, diarrhea, um, miscarriages, uh, even like um, uh, uh, problems with the leg or in the cow. So it was very, very unusual approach and I hope it will, um, um, 
be inspiring for other researchers working with near infrared. Uh, the, the paper that I sa saved for the last is, okay, the last published this year. It is published uh, on 9th of December, and it is a paper about strawberries. Oh, did I fail to mention? No, I didn't, sorry. It is a paper about strawberries, and I would like here to thank uh, to our former student, um, Brim San. Actually, her name, full name is Sukrita Anantavita Yanor from Thailand. That is why we have here the Thai flag. Uh, and this paper, we worked, uh, we worked on this paper together with a um, company, Nichi Intech, who is actually producing um, refrigerators, uh, which are a little bit special. So, uh, Brim San, I want to thank her for uh, incredible work that she did in the area of water activity, uh, food preservation, and um, um, actually uh, exploration of um, different storage uh, systems uh, in, in, uh, and their effects on preservation. This is the first paper that, uh, <laughs> that is finally pu published from this extensive research work. Uh, and part of this research uh, was uh, this girl brain. So um, I would really like to acknowledge her excellent, excellent uh, contribution to this. And this is definitely, I saved this paper for last to say, because this is definitely my favorite second, no. Well, almost second favorite. No, they're they're tied. So rice germ paper and water activity is absolutely my, my favorite. And this is the very, very little, you know, behind, but definitely one of the favorites. So with this paper, what we did was we used only water spectral pattern to monitor strawberries during the during the storage. We were uh, we were able to predict exactly how many days the strawberries were stored. We discovered four new water matrix coordinates, and we, we also managed the, uh, to, to um, actually explain why putting electric, uh, electric field in the fridge helps extending the shelf life of strawberries. So this is about the fridges that this company is producing. They are actually putting electric uh, field. And they noticed that they have beautiful uh, results in preservation of food, but they could not um, actually prove it uh, scientifically and explain it. So we helped this explain this, and uh, why this this why this paper is so so favorite for me, because I don't think I ever saw more beautiful aqua. <laughs> With this aqua, you can see exactly that uh, the strawberries which are stored in the fridge with electric field have the exact same pattern on the sixth and seventh day as the strawberries, which are stored in normal fridge. So with this simple program, I could see, oh, these strawberries have extended shelf life by two or three days. So this is why I, I'm totally in love. Whenever I see this program, I'm like, wow, this was so beautiful. And I, I'm very grateful that I had this opportunity to work on this and to witness something like this. And, okay, so I said that we already published 13 papers. However, there is one more paper which we submitted, uh, revised, and uh, it is, <laughs> believe it or not, I was checking the status of this paper before the webinar. It is pending final decision. The revisions are already uh, past the reviewers, and it is with the editor. So I'm hopeful that this is going to be a 14th publication this, this year. And we did this. Uh, with also my um, uh, for, former student, Brim San, also from Thailand, right? Here is her name, Sukrita Ananti Vitayano. And of course, with our, uh, with our uh, friends from um, um, Hungary, who uh, now include one more person, uh, Zoltan San's student, Flora San, who was with us this year. And I'm very grateful. Hi, Flora. I'm very grateful to Flora, who did such an amazing, um, how can I say, uh, images and analysis uh, of this data and putting all this together in such a beautiful paper. Um, so with this, I think we, yes, 14 publications, I think we're, this is definitely our record for this year. And I think we broke many records with this. Uh, with all these publications, what I want to say that we achieved this year um, a much better understanding of entire uh, of the water structure in this uh, that we can see 
uh, by using near infrared spectroscopy in the first overturn of, of water. We discovered four more coordinates. So we have in total now, 50, uh, sorry, 19, 19 VAMAX. And we are hoping, now this is just a preview of the thing that I'm hoping I'm going to present in a review next year and of course in a book. Uh, so this is how the actually what structure looks like when we're looking at using our approach. And we also uh, now have a better understanding of the uh, phase behavior of water. And we can say that water is definitely far more, I mean, usually people now think that for, uh, water has four phases, like um, a liquid, vapor, and, and um, ice and in addition gel phase, but we saw that it is actually, <laughs> this gel phase actually has more, more uh, phases than, than, than it is known. So in addition to, to better understanding water structure, we also now uh, understand better her phases or her phases and functionality. In the terms of uh, our influence on other people and the, on spreading, with uh, uh, or spreading of our um, our work, I think that we this year also had huge uh, increase in situations. Our situations um, are still not, you know, like uh, let's say uh, like uh, like um, compared to some scientists, uh, this is still small number. But I think this is a huge achievement in just one year that we doubled both um, our situations. So I'm quite happy to show you this too. Um, and in this year, we actually received uh, several awards. So the first award that I would like to mention is an award that we, uh, we won for a um, best poster presented at the Water, International Water Conference organized by Professor Gerald Pollack. And this award is quite dear for me because we did this work together with um, our friends who are no longer with us in, um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Professor Luke Montani, who with Professor Tsenkova did a lot of work on trying to explain uh, some of the, um, uh, some of uh, his, uh, some of the observations that he had about the role of water in um, uh, transmitting uh, information during the uh, amplification process of DNA. So with uh, when I joined uh, these uh, experiments, uh, actually me and Zoltan San also joined, and we were able to do many, many things, but uh, up till now, we only actually summarized this in this one poster. However, uh, even though this is just the tip of the iceberg of what we did with uh, Professor Montagna's team, uh, what we showed with this poster is that this uh, intermediate water uh, water um, type that I mentioned uh, before is uh, cru of crucial importance to enable amplification of DNA, and it really matters. And I said already that uh, this is also a crucial type of water for uh, preservation of life. So I think <laughs> with this, I want to say preservation of life. It seems to mean preservation of information, and this is not. It seems that it is not only um, the role of DNA to transmit information, it seems that it is also coming from water. So I'm very happy that this uh, work got awarded and especially, I'm, I'm just sorry that this is not something that uh, Professor Montani was here to, to, to witness. But uh, with this, uh, as we uh, recently agreed, we're going to, uh, of course, progress with this work and uh, we're going to repeat some experiments in the next year and hope to actually publish finally the paper uh, on this topic. Uh, the next award that we got, uh, that actually I got, <laughs> is a uh, uh, NIR Advanced Award. And I want to say that this is actually the second award that, uh, second NIR ad uh, Advanced Award that, give, that is given to the development of aquaponics. Uh, Professor Senko actually won this award uh, previously, maybe like 10 years ago. And this is the second time that the, this award goes for the contribution and developments in aquaponics. And I'm very, very happy that I received this, this award. And I'm honored and I, I cannot tell you how, how um, pleased I am that actually this, this award comes from Japanese society. For me, that is really something that I'll be forever grateful. 
Uh, the third, well, I'd say it's not such a such a important award, but this is a, a award that um, that was a, a certificate of appreciation for a paper that I never thought would become significant. So um, this is a, a um, this publication from 2021 uh, turned out to be one of the most cited and uh, most interesting publication in this year for people, and I'm surprised that people are obviously so interested in more real-time monitoring in uh, yogurt and um, actually aquaphotomics, uh, for, uh, use of aquaphotomics for this purpose. So we got a certificate of publication from the publisher that showed that this paper is indeed, um, like that this was really interesting for the readers this year. And when it comes to the world level, I would like first to say that uh, now we have uh, more than 20 laboratories in the world which are practicing aquaphotomics. Some of the people who are, um, are now today here, and I would like them to, to say a few comments uh, after I finish. But for those of you who still did not, you can always go to this um, web page and please supply, you know, like short description of your research group and um, we can add you to our map and to our official record of, of people who are practicing aquaphotomics. Um, regarding the publications on a world level, so um, when I did, so the, the, this is a, this graph presents the latest um, uh, the latest results that I googled actually today to see how many publications are uh, published in two th in in this year that mention that are work, that are done in atomics. And we never saw actually such growth in the number of publications. So I'm quite surprised and I'm very, very happy to say that this year it was 340 and the year is still not you know, finished. And uh, when I um, tried to, to predict the trend, this is now the fourth, the, the fourth degree polynomial trend. And um, if we continue to grow like this in, well, seven years, we will reach more than 4,000 publications per year. And now I wanted actually to say just a few words of thanks to all these people who are <laughs> uh, contributing so much. And I'm trying to. Oh, did you see that? Okay, you didn't. So um, with, um, with the next slide, I would like to say that we are very grateful to all the people who are contributing to the development of aquaphotomics. And we do read all these papers and all these papers um, contribute to our knowledge of building the aquaphoton. But this year, as I said in, in the um, announcement of Bonenkai, we decided to give one special word to the paper which contributed uh, most to to our database, to the to the development of uh, aquaphotum, and this paper is written by team of Professor Masato Takeuchi. It is paper called "Investigation on the Mechanism of Magnesium Dehydroxide Dehydration and MgO Hydration by Near Infrared Spectroscopy." This paper, uh, so. Um, it says on the website of the publisher that it is cited only two times, but um, it is not. I cited in, in my publications this year many, many, many times. So uh, this paper really meant a lot to us in the terms that uh, it explained, it showed us, um, uh, it contributed to better understanding of the water structure, which are absorbing in our two WAMAX regions. And I always, very much appreciate this group and the work of Professor Takeuchi uh, because they provide incredible um, description of the molecular of the of the of the situation on a molecular level and they connect it to the to the spectra and the the, the water absorbance species um, that, that we commonly see. So for Professor Takeuchi, this is going to be for you. <laughs> I really, so regarding the, 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 these online Zoom meetings and webinars, the thing that I hate most is that I cannot give a loud applause, but uh, I'm hoping that everyone right. can, can do this. The Kyoto Sensei, are you here? 
Can mm. you just say yes? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for your introduction of our results. Thank you for contributing for, for this. And I hope that people, uh, so we will, we plan to send this to the address that is now written on this website. Is that ah, on the, okay, thank you very okay. much. So uh, I hope that uh, you will, I saw the two more papers, which are very, very nice, uh, but I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I, I can give you again this award next year. So I will see. I, I love the two, uh, two other papers as well. Uh, thank you so much for, for this um, beautiful papers. Your work really, really means a lot to us. Last paper was magnesium hydroxide. Hydroxide. Mm. Uh, there was something about uh, lithium. I saw about the yeah. lithium and there is also ne next FDIR. Month I will submit uh, calcium hydroxide. Ah, yes. Ah, yes, 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 you mentioned that. Yes. Uh, and I hope, uh, so we, we talked about this briefly, but in January, Professor Takeuchi is going to give a webinar. On, uh, I on hope his. so. Yes. yes. <laughs> So stay in, in, in uh, stay please uh, in touch with us, and I would love for you to give a webinar, like a one hour webinar on all the things that you explore. Which and, topics uh, do you, do you want to listen? I mean, I can talk about the absorption of water. Of, yes. Uh, yes, yes, yes. For example, zeolite materials. Yes, yes, yes. And also. Dehydration I can talk mechanism. about the uh, uh, dehydration of mm -hmm. magnesium uh, hydroxide and the hydration of uh, magnesium oxide to mm -hmm. produce uh, hydroxide materials. And also, I can talk about the absorption of ammonia. Oh, on... that's new. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's. Uh, uh, one topic to analyze the surface acidity of catalyst, for example, the right materials. Fantastic. Mm. That's fun that sounds very fantastic for me. I'm very interested mm. in zeolites. I have some samples mm. which I, I found I wanted to explore, but I never did uh, any of the of the work yet. Ms. Mm. Tenko, you wanted something? Yeah, I, I'm. I finish it. Not yet. I have just three more slides. Uh, yeah. Time is going very, very fast. Yes. And uh, we want other people to take part mm -hmm. also. Yes. Okay. So I will be fast. I just want to say that uh, I didn't mention probably lots of people here. And uh, you also, uh, let's say, these papers are published. Uh, these people contributed uh, to publication of these. Um, so you see many names. and. All the world sees that, but uh, there are people who are actually contributing to all that and who always stay behind and they're not easy to see. And I would like to say, uh, so many of the papers that I read this year contributed so much to uh, how I will, for example, um, um, how I will understand some process. And, and you know, like, it's not easy to, to, to acknowledge them in, in, in a, on a webinar like this. So I would like to say, Thank you to many, many people who contributed a lot and um, who are not seen in this way. And especially I would like to say thank you to some people who are here <laughs> and who make, um, you know, like um, so many efforts for all the things to run smoothly, like Lawrence here who organized all these webinars uh, this entire year, or uh, for example, our I don't even know, uh, I don't really like even the word secretary, Ayasan. So Ayasan is amazing. I would think, I, uh, I mean, she's our secretary, but I think she's a dragon woman. <laughs> uh, so many things, I mean, we would not get some projects without her interference. And, you know, like there is nothing like Ayasan or, or on the paper or Lawrence-san. And with uh, talking about these persons, I would also like to, to say thank you to many researchers who visited uh, our lab um, this year. And uh, since I have to actually, I wanted uh, to give some kind of um, a, a sign of appreciation to at least one of these persons who, who are not so easily seen, but who contributed a lot. And one such person is 
Yoko-san. <laughs> so I usually like to say this with a, with a, um, a short expression, Yoko-san is the best. But Yoko Osafune-san really made a difference in this love in this year. So this is something that Yoko-san will be given today from us. <laughs> Thank you, Yoko-san. <laughs> Yoko-san is the best. So Yoko-san really made a difference in many, many, and uh, I'm hoping uh, that she will make uh, a difference for the development of uh, aquatomics in Japan, because <laughs> luckily she speaks very, very nice Japanese. <laughs> yes. Okay, with this, thank you everyone for listening. And I would like now just to say, uh, because this is a bonding type party, thank you for yet another great year. I think we did fantastic. And cheers. And this is Umesh. You cannot take cheers. Cheese. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers, Yana. Thank you very much for, for this okay. absolutely um, mm -hmm. uh, extensive. I will sharing um, the screen for a start. And I'll extensive take um, um, presentation of um, of the, the work of our lab and, and mostly, um, especially your work. Um, I would, yeah, can we, uh, what I would like to do now, um, because it is the, it is uh, our final webinar for this year, and this is a webinar organized by Aquaphotomics, um, um, scient scientific discipline and scientific field. Um, Yelena just reported how many labs we have in, in, um, in, in the world. And we have with us now um, the leaders of those those labs, and I, I would like to invite uh, some of, of you to share um, something, uh, uh, your achievements for this year, um, the news about um, um, your discoveries about aquaphotonics this year. Um, uh, Lawrence, I have a question to you. How long, how much time do we have um, in this Zoom? How, how much do we plan? As long as you want. As long as you want. Zoom is not limiting us. Oh, okay. Um, so I would like to, to ask Zoltan, Zoltan Kovac. He's a, a leading uh, laboratory in uh, Hungary um, University. He's associate professor there. Um, Zoltan, could you please share some um, thoughts with us? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, the opportunity to, to be here with you. Thank you for the initiative. I don't have such a nice presentation as... Can you hear me? Yes, very well. Okay, that's great. I don't have such a nice presentation as uh, Yelena just presented, but uh, I, uh, in the meantime, prepared some slides. Thank you for the opportunity to briefly introduce our activities uh, of 2022. And first of all, I would like to congratulate for your very nice achievements. Uh, it's really, really very nice. And uh, I had the pleasure to visit you uh, a few weeks ago. I, I really enjoyed uh, the atmosphere there. And uh, I think uh, we can be like this because uh, this whole thing started in Japan. And and it's very nice atmosphere and attitude, what, what is there. Uh, nice people can work together and contribute to, to this field. So what we have uh, contributed in, in this year from Hungary, from my team. First of all, a previous publication of ours, which was published in 2019, uh, got awarded. Uh, we received the Tanner Awards from uh, this journal in the category of integrated food science uh, with the paper entitled Authentication of Popeye Wine with the Electronic Pong and Ear Infrared Spectroscopy, when we, of course, also included the application of aquaphotomics to reveal and quantify the adulteration of uh, Popeye wine with sugar uh, addition, with sugar syrup. And uh, this paper was uh, awarded with its uh, honor award because uh, in the last year we were the most cited uh, with this article. And uh, thank you for the 
team for this uh, nice uh, contribution. And uh, I think most of the things Yelena already mentioned, and uh, it's a great uh, pleasure and honor for me to collaborate with you. And actually in this special issue, what uh, Yelena mentioned, we also had the opportunity to publish two papers. One is related to uh, uh, Kafi, uh, uh, Robusta and Arabica, Kafi uh, discrimination. And uh, as Yelena mentioned, very important wave uh, is uh, existing. Recently, uh, we uh, can see more and more the applicability of uh, aquaphotomics to reveal the different forms of uh, food adulteration. And many of our papers are related to this. And uh, actually, in this year, we were not as productive as the Japanese team. Uh, we have published so far about 10 papers. A few of them is uh, under revision and uh, resubmission. So this is why I can't tell you exact number for 2022. And about half of the papers are directly or indirectly related to aquaphotonics uh, uh, as well. And uh, one of uh, our favorite papers, which was also mentioned by Elena, was uh, this uh, aquaphotonics for monitoring of groundwater using short wavelength near infrared spectroscopy. And here uh, again, I, I also would like to thank uh, 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 Mr. Shigaoka and the UNESCO team for the contribution and uh, for the many years long collaboration. I think this is very important for all of us to, to have a team there and the opportunity to, to do uh, aquaphotonics related research there as well. <clears throat> and of course we had uh, uh, more papers related to different fields, just to mention one in fermentation, we could publish a, a paper related to uh, probiotic uh, food supplements and, uh, and uh, the effect of the different st uh, stress factors uh, on their quality. <coughs> and uh, another thing which was not that much in focus because we have started working on this many, many years ago, but now I can see Elena is smiling. I forgot about it. <laughs> I forgot to <laughs> mention the, yeah, yeah, because there, there was uh, one more paper which finally uh, got, uh, not paper, a book, which finally got finished in 2022 after many years of, of pushing the co-editors. And uh, in this uh, book, uh, we actually have a dedicated part with, with uh, three chapters where we uh, mentioned and, and introduced the importance of aquaphotomics uh, from different aspects, of course, mostly related to different food materials. And uh, I think that's all mostly. And I would like to just tell you one more thing. 2023 is in the corner, it's approaching, and I can't believe, but actually three years ago when we had the second Aquaphotonics European Conference in Budapest, I hope some of you still remember the nice snowy, snowy days, and, and I think we enjoyed the conference together. Unfortunately, two years later, due to COVID, we can't uh, organize the Aquaphotomics uh, European Conference. But now uh, it's my pleasure to announce that we plan to organize the next, the third European Aquaphotomics Conference, uh, of course in Europe, this time in Italy. Please book the dates. Uh, it will be in the first week of September, so 2023. And we are planning to organize a three days long uh, session, conference with the, uh, the uh, main organization by the Italian Society of Near Spectroscopy and uh, Cristina Malagori and also Professor Federico Marini. 
And obviously, we also try to contribute as much as we can together with Professor Chankova and her team and with my team. <clears throat> so that's all, uh, briefly. Thank you very much Thank you, for uh, Thank the you, opportunity Zoltan. to talk. And I don't know if I will have the microphone once again or not, as we are running out of the time. But I wish you all uh, very nice uh, winter holidays who celebrates Merry Christmas and Merry Christmas. even more nice uh, uh, contributions and success for the coming 2023 and very good health for the next year too. Thank you very much. Thank you, Zoltan. Thank you very much. Appreciate. Um, Appreciate very much. Uh, we have uh, um, very strong uh, papers this year, many from the Chinese groups on aquaphotonics. Unfortunately, I don't see people from uh, Professor Shao's group, but I would like to give the, the floor to Lian, Lian Li. Um, Lian, could you please share oh. with us uh, your achievements for this year? Your group's Thank achievements. You. Yes, please. Thank you, Thank you Professor. Uh, uh, I, I'm Lian from Shandong University, uh, a young guy from aquaphotonics. Uh, this year, uh, we try to use ecophonomics to solve the problem in pharmaceutical. Um, first, uh, we use uh, uh, near, uh, ecophotomics in the production of pharmaceutical. We try to use a, uh, water as a proof to monitor the extraction process of uh, uh, traditional Chinese medicine or herb medicine. And we found that uh, when the concentration of the active material is very low, it is hard to detect using IR. But with the help of ecophotomics, we can uh, use water as a probe to uh, de deter detect the low concentration of the uh, active materials. So uh, in this aspect, uh, we uh, published uh, one paper which used the uh, ecophotomics uh, as a tool to extract to monitor the extraction process of stevia, uh, a herb. Uh, mm. and second, mm, they try that to use fantastic uh, paper. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Uh, I really love it. So, so, second, we, we try to use uh, NR uh, and uh, we try to expand the uh, ecophotomics to the uh, IRs. Uh, IR region. So um, we use IR to find three bands uh, which could be used, uh, maybe in the future, could be used as a fingerprint um, to uh, to analyze the Chinese medicine or herb medicine. So I think uh, in, in, the, in the future, we would like to take more information, um, which I, I think uh, different herb medicine may have different water absorption patterns. So I think this uh, characteristics could be used as a tool to uh, construct a fingerprint of ecophotomax, and uh, it could be used as a fingerprint to characterize the uh, quality of the herb medicine. Uh, so in this year, uh, we um, focus on these two aspects, and uh, we hope in the next year we could Get more uh, science uh, science work and uh, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, also, uh, last uh, I, I wish all the people have a uh, happy new year and uh, thanks for giving me this uh, valuable chance to share with uh, share my work with all of you. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Liam. Thank, thank you, Liam. I I really expect um, and I value very much your effort to expand the database of WOMAX within infrared, because this is something that we really need. And um, uh, I'm looking forward to see um, the exact bands in um, infrared range. So I yeah. think you, your group can contribute to it uh, and it has been started already. Uh, and that, that is also very va valuable for Chinese medicine. Um, which is has has a future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Appreciate it. And, and um, to to the whole group and and uh, Professor Shao's group also. Please convey 
um, our wishes for a good New Year and um, the Merry Christmas. Um, now we have another group uh, in Bulgaria, led by Stefka Tanasova, professor. Could you please share with us um, something, some news from your group? Stefka Tanasova, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, could you please share with us some of your achievements this year? Uh, this year we started uh, one scientific project connected with uh, uh, plant stress, aquaphotomic uh, approach to investigate uh, stress in uh, green uh, plants. Uh, we started experiment with uh, cucumber and mice. Uh, cold stress and stress caused by a different water regime. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, dehydration of the uh, plants. Now we have more than uh, 2,000 spectra is, and started to, to proceed. Wow. Uh, and to see the, to find the, the differences caused by different uh, uh, plant stress. Uh, another topic is connected with uh, food analysis, especially cheese and meat. Uh, use uh, aquaphotomic approach to distinguish uh, fresh and frozen meat and uh, cheese with different water content, cheese with uh, added uh, dry skin milk in the process of uh, producing. This is our topics at the moment. And, uh, uh, have, you, have you published some, some papers uh, on your work until now? Uh, we have some uh, presentation in the uh, conference and uh, now we prepare some, some papers. Um, uh, I, I heard that you, you have a very um, a new initiative at the university. Um, on uh, using uh, artificial intelligence for um, data analysis. Are you going to use this, this chance also? Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay, we, thank you. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Thank you. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> thank you very much, Stefka. Um, and now we have uh, one more group that, uh, that we have representative. This is um, um, Alex Tuil from um, uh, the laboratory in Unosato. Alex, are you with us? Can you can you share with us the achievements of of Tommy's lab in in um, in Unosato? Yes, of course. Um, first of all, thank you very much for the conference. Thank you, Elena, for organizing this, and uh, Lawrence, and everybody behind the scenes. <laughs> um, yeah, we have a lot of um, work behind our back and still a lot coming uh, in the future. So far, we have done a lot of research on uh, several um, topics, and uh, including uh, mineral waters, uh, yogurt. There are also papers published about this uh, from Alexander Slavchev, who is, I don't think is with us today, uh, and Professor Tsenkova as well and Zoltan also, um, also working on our waters here and uh, how using temperature um, can be used as an identification tool of uh, samples. Uh, but uh, recently we are uh, more focusing at the moment, um, in the last two years, we started um, um, using our new vacuum chamber to extract water from different uh, produces, for example, plants or vegetables or uh, fruits. And with this vacuum chamber, we can extract this water and then we can um, use it for uh, research, for um, further development or blending uh, of, uh, for achieving uh, products with specific uh, properties. And so far we've saw that um, we could preserve uh, partly the functionality of the water when extracted from the original samples. And we plan in the future to use this for um, 
plant growth. This is something that we have discussed recently. And um, speaking of plant growth, we are uh, currently focusing more on soil analysis and crop analysis. And we have uh, already uh, started writing uh, two papers and so there are more to come even. Um, how uh, water can be used also is an identification tool of uh, uh, discriminating and uh, understanding the functionality of the soils and the type of soil. And um, we plan also to, um, um, to um, focus on plants and how they change uh, the soil and how the soil alters the plants themselves. And so far we have very promising results and uh, we hope that uh, until the European conference comes, we can uh, <laughs> prepare something, but we'll see. It's a, it's a lot of work, a lot of, um, a lot of new things and amazing things. Uh, we are also um, working on uh, how, uh, understanding how the flow of water changes the functionality of water. And we are also um, going to see how this will go. And yes, there are a lot of um, site uh, fields that we are investigating, but mainly we're focusing on water and soil and plants for now. So this will be our main focus for next year. Thank you, Alex. I, um, maybe I would like to introduce um, Elasha. Um, yes. A yeah, new member of the lab. Um, she's from Sri Lanka and she works on, on soil. She's our specialist on soil, right? In, in, in your group. Okay. Hi. Hi, Elasha. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we have uh, um, a Professor um, Anibal from um, um, Argentina. Anibal, can you, can you share something with us? Hello. Hi. Hello. Um, good morning for us. <laughs> good, oh, good morning. Yes. So uh, uh, you have um, you wrote a little bit uh, um, in 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 the chat about the water activity. That was very interesting. Yes. Um, uh, I am first of all. I am very glad to to participate in this community uh, because water is becoming a very important issue from different point of view. Uh, specifically, we are very interested in exploring the water uh, structure and thermodynamic properties uh, related to new models for cells in which this, um, uh, the cell is treated as a complex and crowded system. And uh, we publish in all the, in the issue that, uh, um, Jelena mentioned uh, um, how water can be a link to um, uh, to showing two important issues in, in 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 cell theory. One of them is the the quasar based theory of a link and so on, and uh, the other one is the membrane theory. We think that uh, hydration of uh, lipids extended to the other cell components, such as proteins, organs, etc., is a very important issue to understand the physiology of the of the of the cell. Um, during this year, we have uh, uh, different contributions in terms of how water. Uh, um, works or how would it contribute to the membrane proteins. One of them was a, a PhD thesis by Dr. Sebastian Rosa that uh, at this time of the morning it was impossible to wake, to wake uh, him <laughs> to participate uh, because uh, we are still uh, uh, celebrating the World Cup so people uh -huh. is uh, <laughs> um, oh, <yes. laughs> uh, is uh, drinking and uh, and, and well, 
join uh, during the whole night. Well, but uh, in terms of uh, achievements in, in water, this thesis proved very nicely that you can follow the phase transition of lipids following the behavior of water. Mm. That is, we can uh, explore the water components uh, along the phase transition of the lipids. And we see that thermodynamically it is completely equivalent. That was our first achievement. Uh, the thesis was uh, uh, successful. And uh, we published, uh, I think, uh, at least four papers around this. Um, another achievement that it will be uh, ne next year, a PhD thesis also, and we have already two or three papers in this, is to see how the mechanical properties of water, such as compressibility, can uh, be used to um, um, propagate uh, effects from uh, cell exterior to cell interior across the membrane. And that is because the um, water has the property of polarization, not only because it can rotate, but the protons can be shift one by one without breaking uh, the, the H bonds, they can propagate mm -hmm. from one oxygen to other and you can uh, 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 a completely different uh, polarization uh, pattern in mm -hmm. this display. Uh, for us, this uh, uh, is a, a very important issue because we feel that there is a lot of information there that can be used in order to how uh, phenomena of metabolic issues in the cell can be propagated to the, to the membrane or to the cell exterior how, and vice versa. How external signs can trigger metabolic events. So um, the point that you, uh, you made about a water activity is very, very important because one of the papers that we have published, uh, part of it is, is in molecules, in the issue that Jelena and other ones, um, is uh, that uh, water activity is linked to the surface pressure that we can me measure in a, a lipid monolayer. And uh, the lipid monolayer issue is a very important uh, um, um, uh, concept uh, in order to link mechanical, electrical, and chemical phenomena in, in cells. Well, this is very briefly what uh, are our concerns in this year. Uh, we have uh, 10, around 10 students and postdocs uh, working on that. I, I took from the Jelin expo exposure several points that could be developed here in terms of um, food storage, cold stress, honey. We have in Santiago del Estero, we have a, a very big productivity, uh, production of honeys, different kinds mm. of honeys. And, um, and of course, all the theoretical work that we can do about uh, water activity and its thermodynamic problems or uh, properties, uh, but always connected to the uh, cell behavior. Um, our expectative for 2023 is that uh, we could, uh, we, we, we are in, we are planning to organize a symposium in cell biophysics in August next year, uh, in which, uh, we will try to join specialists making the point of how water can contribute to clarify the, the cell physiology. And in this regard, I want to emphasize that uh, we are prepared to organize this, the School of Aquaphotonics uh, together with this symposium in August. Probably we have to discuss some details with uh, Romiana 
later on. And uh, we are, it will, will be a good, good opportunity to, to bring people here to Argentina to make a, a, a point in biophysics of water specifically and to extend it to several uh, applied aspects like such as food, cows here is very important also uh, in the productivity of, the, of, of this uh, university, uh, honey and so on. So that is the um, our achievements, our plans for, for the next year. And uh, when I, I, I hope uh, you will be able to, to attend the meeting and to start uh, uh, nice collaborative works. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very Perfect. much. Looking forward. I really want to see Argentina. I would love to come. Of course. You are welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we have um, with us Ahmed Fairus, also from Malaysia. Uh, Professor Fairus, would you like to share some achievements of your group? Uh, Yelena was talking a lot about your group with uh, lots of appreciation um, and I hope that um, you... Oh, mm -hmm. Professor, you... Uh -huh. Mona, Fairus, are you there? Hmm. Ah, there it is. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Uh, we okay, so can you, we cannot hear you very well though. Hello? Hello. Yep. Is it, is Would you please share something, some of your work with us? Uh, your, your effort to develop aquaphotomics in Malaysia. We, we, I was impressed by the conference that you organized and uh, I saw lots of opportunities to for, for physicists to work in, in aquaphotomics. What do you think? Well, the connection is very bad though. Yes, it seems so. Okay, sorry about that. Um, well, now let's open. We had a very nice message from, from Rehane Gorgi from Sweden. And thank you, Elena, for answering. Uh, and also we had another Another question from MM. I didn't know the, the name. Uh, About uh, fruit and vegetables. Plants. Yes, yes, yes. If you could say a few words, Helena, about this. Well, uh, I'm sorry, I really don't know who MM actually is. So. Not me either. Not me either. So um, I wanted to, uh, um, this person to ask the question live uh, mm -hmm. so that then we can see who is. If MM is here, but I don't see MM now. Well, yeah. the, the question was about how general these um, results can be uh, regarding the strawberries and, and uh, the lettuce that I showed. And uh, it, it is, um, my answer is, um, this is absolutely, so um, what we showed with strawberries and, and lettuce in, in only these two papers, this is such a small, I don't think it's even 1% of the work that we actually did and uh, on many different types of uh, fruits and vegetables, but unfortunately we cannot write papers that fast <laughs> in, in, and have it published. So absolutely what we showed in these two papers is uh, generally applicable for all types. I didn't see, I don't know, um, is there a specific vegetable that I don't think now it can be applicable. So we tried for, for example, the same approach, monitoring the preservation, the shelf life of um, tomato, asparagus, um, grapes, several different cultivars, uh, then um, uh, even other types of food uh, like grain, um, wheat, rice, quinoa. Um, so it is really, it is universal method that can be used to, to um, monitor the, the state of the food or plant, vegetable, fruit uh, during the, the storage. And you can see the impact of, for example, storage atmosphere, of the changing in the storage conditions. You can predict the storage time, how many days, hours, something spent in, in storage and so on. So this is definitely uh, something, uh, I mean, uh, as I was explaining the other day to one of the reviewers, 
who, uh, who was um, doubting about how universal this method is when we are um, doing revision of this latest paper. So this is just, uh, in these papers, you see just 1%, but this is the, our strategy, strategy we wanted to show paper by paper, system by system, what we found, and then we will present it in, in a big review, uh, what can be done with aquaphotomics for monitoring um, storage and how we want to present actually water spectral pattern as a multi-dimensional biomarker or, or descriptor of the state of these food systems in, in the storage, which is much, much better, uh, much more, um, integrative uh, way of, of presenting the state of food uh, compared to just one number, which is water activity. With just one, one number, you cannot say anything about what is the texture of this food or is, is this food tasty, uh, which, you know, like with water activity, you see, aha, okay, maybe there is no bacteria, but it doesn't tell you that the, the food is, you know, like eatable. <laughs> so yes, this is absolutely universal. And we think we have a really, really good thing. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Elena. Do we have some some other um, opinions? Yeah, not a, just things to share um, as a last uh, version of this year. In eggplants and green leaves. Sure, we can talk about Professor. <laughs> Maybe if you want, you want to regarding the question. I'm sorry, Professor. This hour. So the same procedure we also uh, used uh, for many types of green green leafy vegetables. So we can talk about it, but if you want, we can schedule a meeting. Um, okay, now um, it's already two, nearly two hours. Uh, what I would, I would like, of course, to wish um, a very nice um, coming year. Um, most importantly, healthy, a very happy and very productive. Um, but one thing that I would like to probably uh, share with you is um, how I see what is in front of us and what we will try to achieve next year. So we might not be so, so much productive as this year. Um, Yen has been working in, in Kobe for more than five years already, and that this particular year was a, a kind of um, harvest uh, for a long period of time and um, very, very successful. Um, uh, Aquaphotomics itself, as I can see, um, has lots of um, achievements in um, applications in uh, life science, especially in uh, food science. And through those applications, we learn a lot about what structure and basic new um, things about water as a molecular system. All these systems are probes to know water uh, and vice versa, water is a probe to know systems. And this is the beauty of, of the this, of this science. Um, the good news is that we, we could have sim simultaneously basic science achievements and, and application science achievements. Um, this, is a, this is the contemporary science, um, in my view, um, something that uh, it's not easy to achieve, to, to work in a multidisciplinary team. Uh, with people with different um, specialties and to organize those experiments and to acquire this data uh, requires lots of effort and lots of uh, funds, of course. Um, of course, to analyze all this data acquired. So we need new methods for analysis we develop and um, you know, lots of hours uh, for data analysis. But something that is um, I feel more and more important is um, we discover new ones, new um, vibration frequencies specific for, for specific water structures related to specific functions. And we are able to pinpoint 
the contribution of each of those uh, species, each of those uh, conform molecular conformations. Um, but in our studies, in our lab, always, what we always do, we um, always measure uh, consecutive spectrum. With each system, we know how the system reacts to light. And then we always measure time, of course, temperature, weight. So now you, you, you probably already realize that we are on, on our way to see the relation between the water molecular structure and time, water molecular structure and gravity, water molecular structure and light. These are big topics, very important topics. I think water has relation to all of this. And I think 2023 is a year that we'll very seriously um, start working on that. Not, not start, continue working, uh, giving results already and, and some, some, some fruits, maybe some papers. I hope so. So we have been for a long time, as Elena said, we haven't published our work together, done together with uh, Luc Montagnier because we needed more and more and more um, confirmations and um, of things that we have discovered. I think the time is coming when we, we probably will be able to publish some of, the, of these works. Um, and of course, we have also uh, works done on uh, blood brain barrier um, since many years ago. So we're, we're able to publish so many papers because we have uh, um, acquired data and we have been doing these experiments for many years. So luckily, uh, we were able to wrap up this and um, with the um, um, very nice writing of Elena, uh, we could uh, have so many papers and, and um, analysis, of course. Um, and now uh, it, it is time to uh, go back again to some of those works that uh, stay and wait. Um, because we we will be able to to give a more stable um, and con firm conclusions. Well, I think um, another another issue. There are two two um, points that I I've been always interested in this. And one, I think science is not only for scientists. Uh, people um, with curiosity and um, uh, hungry for knowledge, um, they can always do science. And and water is for, for is touching all the disciplines and everybody. So I think it is a platform. Uh, it's not a scientific platform. Aquaphotomics is not only a scientific platform. It, it is scientific and technology, and of course educational platform. It should be educational platform. And I think uh, our effort in the future uh, will be also uh, concentrated on educating people. And I'm very happy that um, uh, um, Anibal mentioned the Aquaphotonic School and uh, Zoltan also mentioned that uh, the European Conference will start with Aquaphotonic School. So um, I think as in, in uh, all the international conferences on aquaphotomics, we have started with public lectures for everybody um, about aquaphotomics. I think we can continue and it is very nice that it, it goes to uh, aquaphotomics school. It is a very good, if we keep the tradition, it will be really, very really nice. I would like to use this um, uh, last uh, webinar for this year to express my really appreciation and gratitude to uh, my lab, to uh, Elena, um, to um, Yoko-san as a visiting researcher in our lab, to um, Ayana Kagawa, um, my secretary for Lawrence Long, who is our IT specialist, to all our um, colleagues that have visited our laboratory, our lab and working with us, um, Flora and Francesco, um, so we, we expect to, to have some results next year related to um, tubules and microtubulin. 
So I'm um, so um, I wish you really uh, a very good year, um, and uh, thank you very much for attending uh, these webinars. And I think uh, we can. Uh, but uh, time is not appropriate, probably for United States. So we we cannot have our our colleagues from from United States. Maybe we we have to think about this uh, time to time, changing the time of the webinars uh, because we want to see them all. I'm not getting up at five. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm joking. This is a joke regarding because Professor Tsenkova, Yoko-san, um, um, many people here are doing uh, five o'clock, getting up and doing um, physical exercises. And I'm the only one who is not attending <laughs> yet. Um, okay, Elena, so um, uh, Kampai. Uh, Kampai. Um, with your Umeshu. I, 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 I don't see any Umeshu in your glass, so you are in a very good mood. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and and cheers to everybody. Okay, so we're doing cheers, uh, cheers, well, cheers, cheers to everybody. Well, goodbye, two thousand and twenty. Come by. Yes. On, bye. <laughs> and Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas Happy to everybody. Merry Christmas. Happy Merry Christmas. Bye. <laughs> Thank Aye. you all for being here. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Aye. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Yeah, Happy New Year. Yeah. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas. 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 Thank Merry you, Christ Christ thank I you. love your tree, Professor de Salon. Yes, oh, beautiful. You. Beautiful, Marita. beautiful tree. Ah, oh, very Bye. nice taste. Thank you for having this beautiful tree. Oh, I was Marita. looking at this tree yes. the whole webinar. Beautiful. It's yes. a present for you here. It is yes, totally yes. in the spirit of this. But you have to, but, but, but you need to come to. to, to oh, I, I, I should. Manami. I should. Hello. I should. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Sandy. <laughs> David Johnson. Yeah. How are you? Where is your drink? I thought you are bringing the drink. <laughs> yeah. So nice to see you. Bye, Muna. Bye, Fire. Bye, bye. Thank you for being here. Thank you for everything. Okay. You have a lot to, to, to talk. <laughs> yes. 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 And yes. Yes. Also. yes. We have. Yes. With pleasure. Yes. Next year, then. <laughs> well. Goodbye, Goodbye for now. now. Yes. Goodbye for now. Have a Many good day. Kisses. Have a good night. Many hugs. Cheers. Yes.